So, the DA in the Western Cape has submitted a motion of no confidence against the Provincial Legislature Speaker Masizole Mwasela. The motion was submitted on Friday morning after the party charged Mwasela with misconduct and suspended him from all party activities. Um, Mwasela joins us now live to speak about this. Thank you so much for making time, Speaker. Uh, first of all, were you surprised by this motion of no confidence by your party? Uh, Clement, I firstly thank you for having me here. Good afternoon to your viewers. I, I was not surprised at all. I mean, the beginning of the year in May, uh, when this uh, matters, you know, started, I, I knew that the next activity would be an attempt to try and remove me as speaker because it was uh, the first thing that I was told by uh, Premier Allen Wind uh, on the 19th, on the evening of the 19th of May, uh, that uh, I must step down as the Speaker uh, and remain a member of this Parliament, uh, which I then refused because how do you ask me to step down as the Speaker and let me sit here in this Parliament and be called an honourable member of Parliament, but you are able to say all the things that you, you are referring to. And obviously, saying that I've committed one, two, and three, and with my clear conscience, how can I sit in Parliament, in a democratic Parliament, with, uh, with such uh, uh, allegations? So I thought it was something uh, obscene and quite uh, uh, disturbing that I could mm. uh, do that. So I expected the motion that it would come. Yeah. So what is the party basing this motion on? Have their own investigations against you been concluded? What have you found? Have, have you been found guilty on? <laughs> Clement, that's a very interesting one. Uh, it's 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 a fiasco, I must say. That uh, it feels like one of those movies where you you watch a movie and then all of a sudden uh, you realize that you are watching a wrong movie. I was sitting in the a federal legal commission convened by the party wherein it's, it's our internal party uh, court uh, you know a disciplinary process uh, it's our legal uh, you know unit that deals with all of the matters of disciplinary in nature so I was sitting there uh, on Friday when I was informed by my office that speaker we have just re received a motion to that intends to remove you as the speaker. And I was gobsmacked, to say the least, that uh, you would receive such a motion uh, in the middle of a hearing by the very uh, organization that uh, submits that same motion in, in, in Parliament. And that, that is what has happened um, up to now. So you are facing an investigation, in my understanding, and, and I think this is what the DA communicated to you by, by the Hawks. There's the Provincial you know, Parliament Caucus, the DA Federal Legal Commission uh, looking into some issues, the DA Caucus in the province as well. My understanding is they're also looking into, into this. Do you not think that you, it, it's better that you step aside, clear your name, and if you succeed in doing that, then resume your duties? Uh, Clement, there is no step-aside policy in my organization. So let's not confuse parties here. There, there's no step-aside in the DA as, as it stands. But, but also, the, the Hawks never made contact with me. I have never been charged. So even that step-aside of the other parties, it says once you are charged, I have never been charged by the state. So I don't understand why would you say, uh, is it not wise to step aside? It would actually be a very, very wrong thing to do because it will then mean that I, it's an admission of guilt. And that is something very wrong to do for a person to do. Mm. There would be no basis for me uh, to do that, Clement. So the allegations against you are that you have been traveling all over the world at taxpayers' expense and not focusing on your duties. Do you have to always have your trips 
approved by the party? Is this something that all of um, the leaders of the DA who are deployed in government have to do? Uh, Clement, the, your, your question is pregnant because it fails to deal with the real issue. The real issue here is that the, the speaker is the speaker of parliament responsible for the institution. I've got seven political parties in the institution. So all of the traveling you are referring to, it was the speaker traveling in that capacity as the speaker of parliament. Then the second part of your question, that matter is with the Federal Legal Commission, and I will not uh, second guess that process because the party is still busy. As we speak, I'm still sitting in the Federal Commission. Uh, until last Friday, I was still there, and the matter is still ongoing. Yeah, but what I'm asking is, has the DA ever refused that you go and attend one of your conferences or even travels outside the country. Have you said to the DA, there's something I need to attend as Speaker of the Provincial Legislature, and they said no? Yes, they have. They have, Clement. The party uh, has indicated um, in the past, in so far as my uh, indication that I will be traveling, uh, where they would say, no, 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 we don't think so. But the question is, uh, that is the matter that was ne not necessarily for the traveling of for the party. Uh, it is everything that I've been doing here now. It has been the speaker doing his job as the speaker and traveling as the head of the institution and, of course, the head of the international relations component insofar as the parliament itself for diplomatic purposes. Okay. Let's test some of the allegations that are, are being made against you, as Speaker. My understanding is that there's a document that was sent. And of, course the, and, of course, the whole issue of separation of, of, of the, and the, also the whole issue of the established doctrine of a separation of uh, powers between the legislature, the executive, and the judiciary. Yeah. So the speaker in that capacity, I think it's important that as you ask the questions, you also understand that the speaker is the speaker of parliament, not the speaker for a party. There are seven political parties in parliament where I have a responsibility over all of them. Yeah, no, no I understand that. Um, but my understanding is that it's actually just normal practice within the DA, that they're not expecting that only from you as speaker, but any of their employees. If they have to travel outside the country, they've got to state... Um, and, and get permission from the organization. Whether that is right or wrong, I think that's another conversation. What I was asking um, as a follow-up there was, uh, uh, my understanding is that there's a talk document that was sent to the DA's provincial leadership outlining expensive expenditure by your office. Is it true that sometimes when you are attending sittings, you stay in hotels as opposed to your own home in Cape Town? The, the matter is, is common cause that the party has brought certain allegations against me, and those allegations are part of the disciplinary hearing currently by the Federal Legal Commission, but none of that has been brought by the party to Parliament for the conduct committee uh, of Parliament to deal with them. The enabling, the enabling policy for members in Parliament does not only deal with the speaker, it covers all the 42 members of parliament, uh, Clement, to respond to that specific question. I would like to get a, a much clearer, specific response, speaker. Have you stayed at a hotel in Cape Town when you are attending sittings as opposed to your own home? Yes, yes, I have. I have, in terms of our policies of parliament. Does that make sense, though? How do you justify that kind of expenditure when you have a home in Cape Town, but you're staying at a hotel?
Clement, I'm saying that in terms of the policies of Parliament, there, there are provisions that enable uh, members to stay in a particular uh, location if they are working. I live in Hermanas, by the way, for your information. Whoever briefed you, they lied to you. I can assure you, Speaker, nobody has briefed me. I'm asking you questions about the allegations that have been made against you, and we're giving you a platform to clarify that to the public, because you do work for the public. I'm trying to understand from you, policy is not something that is forced on you. It can be a policy where I work, that I have to f fly first class, but I don't have to do that when I understand the financial status of the company I work for. So if you have a policy as the legislature that says you can stay at a hotel when you have a house in Cape Town, how do you justify that kind of policy? Because that sounds like wasteful expenditure to me. Uh, Clement, let me say this again. I live in Hermanas and I stay there. So when I come to Parliament and if I want to stay in a hotel because I finish a, a bit late or I'm going to start early, that, that is a provision for all members of Parliament who then make that request to Parliament. So you're asking a very um, um, obvious question to me, but to, it's not obvious, but that is a provision by our uh, internal policies in, in Parliament. So your question is, if you were to fly business class or first class, I, I think that would make sense if you were to make that determination. And for instance, if members stay in hotels and they stay in a five star, six star, seven star, a uh, provision would be that is it something that's fair? Is it something that we should be using taxpayers' money on? Remember, the Western Cape Provincial Parliament uh, does not have uh, homes in the city for those members who, who reside outside the city. And if there's any wrongdoing, Parliament itself will deal with those matters as a parliament in terms of the policy if a member has done something wrong in terms of that. So under what conditions can you stay at the hotels? Um, is my last question, Speaker. Is it when the meetings end too late or after every council meeting, if you don't stay within the city, then you've got to be booked at a hotel? No, Parliament, uh, other legislatures, they do it differently. I know, for instance, Eastern Cape, they've got a residence for members. That means when you sit uh, in a chamber until late, you are able to go to your home in Bisho, for instance. We don't have a Bisho here, so we don't prescribe to members, say that if you finish this time, you must uh, go to a hotel. But what we do prescribe is the distance within which members can travel, I mean, can can claim for if you stay within 20, 20 kilometers, you can't stay in town and they expect us to uh, to pay for that. But the reality is that uh, all the members who serve in parliament are empowered by the particular uh, range of policies that cover that, including issues of travel, and that will then cover their petrol. As the speaker, I don't claim for that because I've got an official state vehicle. Uh, and also issues of uh, cell phones and all of that. So all of these are enabling, okay. are enabling policies as part of the tools of trade to empower members of parliament to do their job. All right. Masi Zole Masela, the Speaker of the Western Cape Provincial Legislature, thank you for making time for us on Newsfeed PM this afternoon.